Hello again, I'm Paul DeWinner with AEA Technology Incorporated. In this next video segment, we'll be showing how to test twisted pair cables using our E2020 STEP TDRs. Twisted pair cables covers a broad spectrum from telephone outside plant, like this cut section of a 500 pair cable, to land and other premise cabling. Additionally, many of the testing principles for twisted pair cables discussed here also apply to any multi-pair cables in the same jacket, like these power cables or irrigation cable, or any two or more conductors are in constant contact inside the same jacket. Most twisted pair cables have an impedance of about 100 ohms. However, some networks and systems, like field bus networks, use 120 ohm cabling, which our E2020 TDRs are capable of handling. In the U.S., twisted pair cabling for data communications applications is produced to ANSI TIA 568C standards. The equivalent international standards are ISO IEC 11801. As shown by the chart, these cables are classified by TIA category or internationally ISO class for the network maximum speeds they're designed to handle, known as CAT1 or internationally class A, to the recently approved CAT8. Any of these type of cables can easily be tested using our E2020 STEP TDR. The most popular, CAT3 through CAT6A, are included and installed on our TDR's cable list. I do need to point out that our STEP TDRs are excellent for finding distances to faults, even small faults, end of the cable, and connection points, but they're not TIA or ISO network certification instruments. That task requires a special instrument like Ideal Network's Landtech series. Now let's look at some of the twisted pair cable typical faults as seen by our E2020 TDR. The first step is connecting the cable pair under test to the TDR. Any of our E2020 TDR models can test twisted pair cable, even the E2020N model with its single end connector. Both our E2020B with a BNC port and an RJ45 and our E2020F with an F connector and an RJ45 can accept four pair uh, cables or less by simply plugging them into the RJ45 port here on, on the top end. If you wish to connect a smaller connector such as a, a tel telephone uh, cable RJ11, RJ12s, it will accept those as well. The RJ45 test port also connects with our telco test leads. These leads have two sets of alligator clips and are designed to connect with uh, TELC standard 66 blocks. They can also connect to uh, connection screws, other connection points, or to the wire itself, either bare wire at the end, or they have a bed of nails in them, which allows them to connect directly through insulation if that's more convenient. These leads are included with our cable TV and TELCO TDR models. Lastly, for single pair connections, we include either a BNC to alligator clip or F to alligator clip test leads depending on the TDR model. These permit testing twisted pairs via the coax port. The E2020N model also includes an end BNC adapter so it can also test twisted pair through its coax port. With our four pair cable connected at the RJ45 jack, We'll use the cable menu to select a TIA CAT5 cable type as indicated on the cable's jacket. Some jackets also include the velocity factor. Uh, if the jacket's velocity factor is different from the velocity factor in the TDR's cable list, the TDR's list can quickly be adjusted to use the cable's velocity by using either the backspace key or go to the cable menu and use the manual entry key. Also, if you're planning an installation of a number of cable runs, it's wise to measure the actual velocity of the pairs and average that velocity factor. Use the sample cable option in the cables menu on each pair, then either average the four different velocity factors or pick one pair's velocity as the measurement standard for all runs. This will make all your measurements more accurate. Next, use the input channel option in the meter menu to select a pair to measure. The E2020 TDRs use channels A, B, C, and D to avoid confusion between the test pairs reference and that of the different wiring standards. Refer to the operator's manual Appendix B for a more detailed guide to the standards, pins used, pair numbering, and wire color codes.
I'll use channel A, which are the center two pins, and connect to pair one, the blue-white pair, for both TIA's 568A and 568B wiring standards. Our first cable is 100 meters or 328 feet, as shown by cursor 1, and appears normal. The loop resistance represented by the traces dribbled up is obtained by measuring the delta between the cursors positioned at the start and the end of the cable. The end is open right now, as shown by the straight upward trace at the far end. If I short pair 1 at the far end, you'll see the trace go towards 0 ohms. Next, we'll look at some common twisted pair faults. Our first fault is split pairs. This occurs in multiple twisted pair connections and splices when one wire from one pair is accidentally crossed with one wire from an adjacent pair, as shown in this example. The result is the signal is now traveling between two wires not paired but in the same jacket or sheath. The impedance for the unpaired wires is much higher. This seriously attenuates the signals. If the split pair is corrected at the location other than the original split, it's called a resplit. Although the two pairs involved will return to their original 100 ohm impedance, the high impedance section between the split and the resplit will continue to attenuate and create unwanted signal reflections. Bridge taps, a rare drop cable, is attached to a main or teed off the main line as shown in this drawing. The phone companies used to install bridge taps to their outside plant lines to connect new residents or businesses without a previously installed cable. Those are all being removed thanks to DSL and VDSL. These high-speed digital services are ruined if there's a bridge tap left on the main line used for that service. The bridge tap is characterized by a drop to almost half of the cable's impedance over the length of the tap. This is caused by the TDR seeing reflections from two parallel cables at the same time for the length of the tap. The tap's length can be measured by placing one cursor at the point the impedance drops and the other cursor at the point where it starts to rise back to normal impedance. The delta reading is the length of the tap. Twisted pair connection points can induce other issues like too much untwist in the pairs as shown here. These create high impedance points that can both reflect and attenuate signals passing through them. Any untwist adds signal crosstalk between the pairs, a killer for Ethernet networks. Correction is simple as restoring the pair's twist as much as possible. For LAN networks, the plug or jack connection must be redone. Another issue is series resistive faults. These are generally caused by dirty, contaminated, or corroded connection points that add resistance to one or both connectors in a pair. The result on a step TDR is a sharp upward step in the trace. That's the resistance being measured at the fault and added to the impedance. Again, another unwanted reflection and attenuation point along the pair's length that needs correction. In our last test, we'll demonstrate what water or even a little moisture looks like in a twisted pair cable. For demonstration purposes, our victim cable has its jacket removed. When I dip the pairs in the water, it reduces the impedance between the wires significantly. The liquid does not have to be water. Oil, hydraulic fluid, fuel, any liquid will induce this effect. Wet cable traces will vary in appearance but will always be an erratic downward excursion in the impedance. Additionally, the velocity in wet cable changes to some unknown value, so measured distances in or after the water cannot be trusted. This concludes our segment on testing twisted pair cables. Once again, thank you for watching and we hope this video was informative. For more videos in this series, please visit our website at www.aeatechnology.com. Go to Library for a complete list of videos. If you have any questions, please contact us at the number shown below to speak to a sales associate or technical representative.